still get quite nervous to this day, especially when people take me too seriously. It's like, I want to see the series already, so much. I'm going to show you the door. Yeah, good to be here. Uh, thank you to AMT, uh, All Mutual, everybody uh, that invited me. Um, what I've been asked to come and share is really what I like to talk about whenever young people, or I guess young musicians, come to me and they want to talk all the nice things. Hey, Prasoy, listen to this, tell me what you think, you know? And then I'm like, but what must I listen to? Must I listen to your voice, the song, the production, the yeah, what? And still I must give you a report, <laughs> you know? Uh, and it seems like a lot of people don't really know what it is that they want. And when I start, when I start talking, you know, but let's talk, what is it that you're looking for? And all those uh, serious things, you know? And it's like, eh, I want to imagine 13 days serious, you know? People want to talk the nice things, you know? But uh, I have to talk the serious things. And uh, that's why I'm happy that this is an opportunity for me to talk those serious things. And it's mainly got to do with the business of music. And because that's what it is for me. Yes, everyone sings. Everyone sings. Okay? Everyone sings nice. So mom and mommy says something. Listen here. What do you think? It's nice, man. It's like, before I even listen to it, I'm sure it's nice. Uh, but it's about, but what you want? <laughs> what you want to achieve? You know, there's many churches just in, in this area alone or in Soweto alone. And I can tell you om at almost every church, there is hot singers. Should everyone have an album? Right? Should everyone be a star? And they all sing the same songs. They all sing the same things, uh, appeal to the same people, and it's like, what, you just want those people to hear what you do or what you have that you think is unique that can stand out and what makes you think you're going to be a star? Or do you want to, do you want to be outstanding? Or Funanjo's with voice, Yako, with CD? If it is what you want, that's fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, it really depends on what it is that you want to achieve. My main concern is really, what if you have a big hit? <laughs> what if? You release this song and it goes boom. What are you gonna do about it? Are you ready? <laughs> are you ready for that? You know. So for me, it's really about when I started thinking. You know, I started Nami. You know, I came into the industry and I was excited about music and I was still growing, checking out production, and I was on some. No, for me, it's not about the money, you know. It's not about the money. I just, you know, <laughs> money, whatever. But when you don't care about the money, and then you find out that what you've been doing has been bringing in a lot of money, but it hasn't been coming to you. That's like... Could you do with the car? Yeah, I could do with the car. Okay, sure, you call Nanja, you call Nyana, I have a Chumengi driver. There are days, Lapo, I don't have petrol. But I could do with, you know, just this move, Nyana, and Jesse, nice. You know, and those days, like golf tools were just coming in and they were looking nice. You know, nice townhouse. Yeah, I could do with that. Do you know that, Grand Grand, if you got all the money that was due to you, you could be having all that stuff. Yeah. So you have made the money. It just has not been coming to you. But there is that guy, Dave or Mike. Hey, how's it, Zwa? Nice track. The actor, the actor loving it. Eh? Yes. Like, just keep up the good work. Eh? And then, oh, Dave, we told you, you get a new look. No, and like, oh, Dave, you told and then basically, you put that. Which is, <laughs> there's nothing wrong. Dave knew that's what he was going to do. And you are okay with it. She said, you didn't know. 
So if you don't have a plan, you're going to fall into somebody else's plan who doesn't have a plan for you. So all these things, but I'm an artist, I complain. Oh, that I'm not ropey. I'm ropey, right? It's like, <laughs> dude, you signed. You know, I've gotten to a point in my life where I don't want to blame anybody and for no blame mom for anything, for anything. Be it my child. Here's some done again, so all I think about is like what. Could I have done differently or how differently should I do things? Even how people treat you. It's about <laughs> what is it that I can change? Not about how that person behaves, but more on how it affects me and what is it that I would like to happen. Okay? So in the world of business, you know, uh, I used to... Many people may not know this, but I used to do jingles, you know what they call jingles? Like in Dengi, so Nama Zongel is in, back in the early 90s already. And uh, yeah, all jam alleys, all those things. With Ringo and Bo Wing Sekhali, I'm sure you'll know the guys. Uh, you know, Abos Sestela Kumalo. And this was now the early 90s. And I remember actually one of the Jam Ali promos, they said, uh, this one guy who was a jingle writer says, hey man, there's a rap thing, you know? Uh, don't you wanna, can't you, I'm sure you can do rap. Yes, cause I was black. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was like, no, no, no, no, no, no. Not knowing that years later I'll get a rap award, but that's another conversation. <laughs> so, so I said, no, no, okay, Mina, don't do rap, but I've got a friend who, who can come in. So, I told Cabello who used to do beatboxing and stuff. We are about to come to the studio, so hey, Cabello that day. Yo, I got organized for your studio, my cool shit, nan nan. Yo, Shaivas. But what I'm coming to is what was interesting for me is that post 1994, it was still the same, not same white guys, the same old white guys writing the jingles, getting all the work, okay? Now you and I may say, ah, man, I can even write better songs than that guy, you know? And Abanya Vele, they get it from you. But now when you're dealing with business and you have clients, especially brand managers and, and ad agencies who've got clients, all they want is not how great a song is, or how talented you are. They're just looking for reliability. Just be reliable, chief. They mustn't like, ish, sharp, mara, ish. Sometimes no figure late, or sometimes no means in this one, so there's nothing like expecting delivery and it's not there. And that is how you sustain yourself in the business. At the end of the day, it's not about it's not about how talented you are. It's about how reliable you are. Look at everyone that has succeeded and stayed on top of their game for so many years. They are there not because they have great voices, but because they take themselves seriously. We keep calling this an industry, but there's no professionalism. There's no professionals. That's why this Pekanji, hey, Maria, I'm a musician. Because even musicians themselves don't take themselves uh, uh, seriously. So I thought, just uh, me trying to be serious. So I think uh, these are questions that are extremely important for you to ask yourself. How I think many artists or people want to come in, this is how they, these are the kind of questions they ask. Who am I? I'm in a new, I'm fun at Milan, as we know what you know, writing, not writing, not writing. Like so. And Minanga shy at it in. Right? And Minam for you. And the Buddhist was a Ranjani is another thing. 
But it's like, yo, shkutliana ne yo, shkutliana yo, shkutliana ne yo, well. Maruguti chuna ganja is another thing. There is a dream, there's a facade, there's this whole thing which is like a dream. Yazin, minangfuna. It's like, do you know how hard I work? I know a lot of people are like, hey, Zoya is a real genius, you know? Uh, like, even the MC, like, yo, Zoya goes beyond the quiet or whatever. He's also music director, nye, nye, nye. He says, he's extremely talented. And I'm thinking to myself, no, Chief, I work hard. <laughs> I work hard. These things, like even this, this program, Fana Nabo, Nabo, but you know PowerPoint and Microsoft Word and all that stuff? I taught myself that stuff because I saw the importance of knowing how it all works. So if I'm sitting there, and this makes a big difference. No, Excel, sorry, I don't mean to, dis to, to disrespect, you know? Now Apple products have their own uh, uh, uh, stuff, like your, your pages, your numbers, and so on. All of them I learned in one night. I taught myself because I saw how important it is to know that stuff for my business. Okay? How you, you must know how much it is that you want to make out of anything. And for me, it's not just about money or the word money, but it's more about the word value. Now, instead of asking, what am I or who am I? I think it's important to turn those questions into, what is my core business? You know? What am I really selling? Am I selling a product? Is this really about having a CD or is this, am I in this because I think I sing really well and people love the way I sing? You'll get instances, La Pumuntu say, you worship leader is on doing it. And Tulukuti Sondo has got many branches around the country. Okay? And we are Ziwa Loyo Mundu. And when you look at those numbers, it's big numbers. And then a person will come to me, at Prasoyman Eshin, if you deal. And I'm like, deal, Yan. Or when you're can sign it. It's like, sign what? Uh, but that, that's you now coming into the, not the music space, the recorded music space. Okay? Which means you need someone to put money. You don't know that, but you're asking for someone to invest in what you do. Basically just for you to get it recorded. Okay? They pay for that. All they pay for is that recording, but they own a lot more than that recording. Okay? And then, once that is recorded, then there's all these other middlemen, or these other middle people, before it hits the store. Now, corner. The store doesn't just have your CD. They need to understand who, to, who is this artist or movie, but there's no biography, there's no bad thing to say who you are. So they're just taking a chance, and trust me, when you knew, maybe the most a store will, do, will take is about two copies. In the corner, you will not get the shelf lay, or when you walk into a store, hey, now you see the guy riding. You know It's going to be wherever. So that once people come, start coming to look for it, that's now, that creates, like for them it tells them to net demand. Okay? Then, oh, okay, I'm going buy a phone. Okay, yes, and I think I another two more. You know, always say good record companies take, take, or they make a lot of money out of us. Try the retailers. Your CD out of the record company comes out at 32 Rand. And then Imakapiabo can be a good 100%. Like Kaltin, 64.99. Essentin, how much do you think it is? 100%. They have to make the money. 
Now, that's got nothing to do with your singing. You stop singing, it's cut to record. That's, like in true terms, that's none of your business now. That's another business. You know? And, and then a lot of times you having to spend time going to promote it, going to do this, going to do that, going to do that. You, when are you going to sing? Which is what you wanted to do. Whereas, if you look at the church that you sing at, right? And the different branches, you know what I'm back time. Okay? After you've sung that worship, you know what it, they can be. You know an anointing, ne? Anointing, yes, and yes, but you are managing Babambi. So we now watch Jesus is done, done. And I ask, but you want to meet? Hallelujah! Pagami banja long, you know. And Beatles, the Beatles used to sell so they used to sell all their records after their shows, and they sold millions, you know. That is where your magic. That is your business. When I say to you, ask, what is my business? That is your business. If you had, like, 150% more records than you did at the record stores and you sold them immediately after each service, how many records do you think you'll sell in a month? So where is your business? It's at the church. Don't think because about are there and everything is there and there on TV, live, M, dun, dun, dun, dun, dun, dun, dun. that's what <laughs> it's about. No, it's not about that. You need to know where your business is, who your customers are, who your clients are. And John, who is it that you need to be in favor of so that, that know where your money is, if I in your way am. Okay? Yes, young fan. Tina, again, we like black people. We like show, doing things so that we can show people that we would bang board. Young fan, that bang young fan, singing and that. Yo, which is a pity, but that is what it is, you know. We do things to show. In fact, not even to show, but to yesa na kwenye. It's fine if you're doing that, but can you put value to that? Can you put value to that? Like, ye ni leon, what does it give you besides thinking ugutu zobanyiz? Even na kona sauce pete, when uka wangutu yabanyiz, amarabanda wana msebiz. You know? So, it's important to know where your money comes from, who your clients are, and some of us, a lot of us in what we do, it's not, uh, it's not from yourself as a business, to necessarily to the end user, but who you need to impress is the person that actually books you. They have direct access to the end user. So who will think, yeah, maybe they have a big hit and then they have an attitude towards the client. <laughs> but you need to be nice to that guy because he actually hires you. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's very important to be awake and basic business knowledge is incredibly important. When I say to you what I'm concerned about is if you have that big hit. So it's important to be prepared always. Do you know that there are people not prepared for growth? Gee, the business is growing. I didn't expect it to grow. Like, you know how to, and that's where they fall because they didn't expect the growth. Like, give you a simple idea. Mambochi on Halloween was the last song I expected to be a hit. But it can be. But should it happen, are you ready? Okay? And what they, there is a definition that is kind of loose out there that says opportunity meets preparedness. And that equals, like, that's what luck is. So, uh, have you ever met someone or knew someone who knew someone that if you knew you could utilize that opportunity a lot more than them yeah. it's like v2 
Le auti çok üstü değil. İsla diyor abi, ne yapıyorsun ben? He is not prepared for that opportunity, but mina kaili opportunity because mina he kiles lady den yaz guti what it can mean for me. But now that is preparedness. I just need that opportunity which what I have. I can make the most of that opportunity. Okay? And some opportunities may really be there and you just not prepared for them. And it's okay to keep them. There are many people have done a lot of favors for sang at their weddings, did this and that for them or whatever. It's like afterwards, so I want to pay you. No, man, it's okay, man. It's okay, I did it. You know what I'm saying? But I know what I don't want to use that just yet. You funny spanish some mangi shop. Okay? And opportunities present themselves in different ways. You know? Uh, a lot of people call, you know, I like to call problems, what people call problems or challenges. I see a lot of problems as opportunities. The tax issue that I had, you know, uh, uh, when TKZ was hit with the big tax thing, that for me, that whole experience, which I'll share a lot with you about, that whole experience for me was such an opportunity for me to know a lot of what I know today. Especially when it comes to business. Okay? Use these problems or whatever you see as an opportunity for you to learn and there's, not, there's no such a thing as, as, as standard. You know, like, ah, oh, no, no, no, it's a standard contract. It's like, you must say, what's standard about me? And whose standard are you applying? Things do not have to be the same as they've always been. And it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to be, ah, no, kumele wenza so, because gwenzo are so. Just know what is standard. What is standard is that you cannot have, you cannot have, you cannot have any, you cannot have a business without submitting, without submitting an invoice. If you are not invoicing, you're not really in business. Yeah, you may be making the money, but in terms of creating value for your business, which is what is standard for the business, like for business, it's standard. Okay? So you are playing in the space that's standard, but doesn't mean that you are standard. Okay? Out of everything, you need to be able to always try and apply a value. So, my was good. Yes, layout is good for me. Because it could and so on so on so on so what is that in value terms? Because while you're still trying to build this thing or, um, or say in a group, okay? And any uh, Italama keyboard, when you are cool, I say, oh, Munyam Clambu, you producer or whatever, songwriter. Try and put value to that is Sasu Ganje because it's gonna come in and you're gonna need to put value to it. And man say go and my emotion in you say so much sense are ganja. Try and make sense of that Zisu Ganje. Okay? If Umundu says I go your pala brothers or TKZ, yeah no, they can manage us because they've been booking so and so and so, and it's like they want twenty percent because and they say no, that's standard. A management fee and I say no but we're not standard you're not having to go out there and look for work and spend some of your time calling around because we are Bala brothers already the calls are just coming in and all you have to do is just pick up the phone and manage the transaction going from there you're not having to spend time really pushing this and using some of your resources or because you've been managing so and so and so and so and so, that is value to your credibility is out there. No, So it's very good already, that's value. Now you use that value in order to attract new business. So it went on, I'm in your manager, I'm in your manager, I'm in your manager, I'm in your manager. Oh, really? That's value. Okay? Okay, cool. I'm going to scoot you high. Okay? 
and now you're riding on that person. Now that, now that person is using what they have as value to get you. And sometimes you can have an asset or something that you have and you know that that business needs that. Okay? And you use that as value in order to get. Now once you have, say it's television, okay, and you know that a particular brand or a particular event could do with knowing that there's television. And it's like, even though you don't have that, you're like, eh, I have television. Okay, actually, that's all we want. And now you're using value against value. Okay? Is, am I talking hectic stuff? Niang Toa, Lana? Ask yourself, in monetary terms, what is this? Okay? Marriage, for instance. So, Shuti, just in general, for Ukshat and Jenny, Kaya 50%. Nikshata because in Yagnanya, right? And now Yagnanya, and we want to be together. So, can you explain to me? No, no, not that we're going to share Yimon and you. Or Yimi, who can bring in the money. So, Atiena, yeah, Mariminanzo Pegel and Ipegela, you Pegela Vandal and Tim Tim, it's okay. If I were to get a nanny, get a chef, how much would that cost me as an external cost? No, not what's a lot? What's a lot? You need to put a monetary value to that. Okay? Just to get an understanding, okay? And when I say to you, I like to think of just money, but more value. In terms of like, how valuable are you? Just having you in the group, what does that mean to us? Okay? Actually, I wonder like when we started with Wala Brothers, there was a Pelo who was 14 years old at the time. And whenever Pelo would step on stage, man, nabo mama, <laughs> And I was smart enough to say, that's value. I could have easily been, and But where is the value? Is Bala Brothers, do people love it because we sing well? Yeah, that's a, yeah, we sing well. But where is the value? The fact that we're brothers, that sentimental value, okay? Excuse my French, but what will f you up is ego. Oh. <laughs> that is what's killed a lot of groups in the history of music. They start together nicely, yo! Two, three hits. Ah, man, the elite singer. Ah, man, it's like you, me, not too loud. Man, just saying, who prayed and the big dudes. Hey, young child. Sometimes it's, and a lot of the time, it's, it's, it's in the hidden stuff. It's, when I say to you sentimental value, it's in the story. It's in the story. What is it that people really connect to? They connect to the story. They feel attached to you. They just, that's what advertising does all the time. They want you sold to them from here. Not because, I mean, look at Coca-Cola, it's black. If you like to buy that black thing, like would you buy, like J Black? But, and it doesn't even mean coke anymore. It means go a shop. Right? You can trust because the brand has grown so much. You know? Was Mandela really the greatest president? Maybe not. Maybe he was. But the fact that he sacrificed so many years and that is the story. <laughs>
Right? So, and the sit back, take 10 minutes of your life and sit back and think about what really counts. What counts? Take your emotions away, take everything else away. What really counts? What really counts? TKZ, the fact that we've known each other since her scale, I think is, even to us, it's like, Joe, you're Kumbula, Joe, since scale. Talking about 14, 15 years old. And look at us now, like, what? We used to dream about this shit, man. You know? That already is like, even amongst us, it always is the one thing that brings us together, Mara. You know, our friendship is bigger than anything else at the end of the day. Always let the main thing remain the main thing. Things come in, things go out, but let the main thing always remain the main thing. You know, once I was uh, in Randberg, 2014, and uh, oh, I was actually in court <laughs> for something. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, the judge says, yeah, we'll adjourn for an hour, whatever, uh, lunch. And uh, I went up there, you went to McDonald's, I ate Dan Stradom. What's Dan Stradom now, Malibong? Now, I'm like, Ish, yeah, maybe Teganyan or some, but I mean, I'm not a big, like, just, that's just me. I'm not saying don't be into burgers, but I mean, I'm not a big um, fast food, especially the big brands that are really just churning out these things. But then I see, good, okay, gourmet burgers, like, you know, a new style of burgers, and okay, I'm saying, okay, yeah, let's check out this place. You know, it seems like it's the only store, but it, you know, it makes nice burgers or whatever. So I chilled there, and this place was called Rocco Mama's, you know? So I'm sitting there, and then this white oak comes to me, hey man, hey man, how's it, eh? I know Cubs, you know Cabela, say him, tell him I say hi. I'm like, good. He says, no, bro. Um, I used to be a waiter at Steers with Cabello. And I remember Gabriel's finest years, like for extra money when he was at Vitz Tech. So Uti, you have to tell him that eventually I opened my restaurant because I was into rock music. So that's why I called it Rock Mamas. I'm like, dude, that's so cool. You know? A year later, Rock Mamas is everywhere. The value in that business was so much that I don't know who actually bought it. I think, I think it was Spur or something. You see the story of that guy? Oh. He said, because he was into rock music and waiting, some of them are STS, no cabello, whenever that was. He had that story. So, his sweat equity, his in emotional investment into this thing is so deep that I don't even know actually the real setup. But in many cases, when someone has built, because you build a business, Either you, you, you, you, you really make a lot of money out of it or you build it so that you can sell it. But a lot of people are so deeply invested in it and they are the only people that can really take care of that brand or they wouldn't want to just hand it over to someone just because because don't be able to, it's not here for them, whoever's gonna take it. It doesn't matter how much experience they have. A lot of the times then, the big monies pull the brand into their pool, but then they allow that person to be the CEO and still take care of the brand. But working for them. Do you understand? So, when someone comes to you with a contract, or Ati, yeah, Maratina Soti, try and think, but ish, there's this thing that I'm feeling, I wonder if, like, I wonder, probably does exist. There probably is a provision for that I wonder. 
Negative. So find a way. For the mere fact that you thought about it, it probably does exist. For the mere fact that you can dream about something, it exists. <laughs> you imagined it, it's there. You see it. Right? You see it. You see it. Why not? Half mana umdu who specialized in that thing. Tina would like being yo, and then the next thing, when the branding, the next thing you're in charge of your social media, the next thing you're in charge of that and that. And there are people who actually do that for a living. And sometimes you crack your skull. And and for me, time, if you, you can do anything to me, just don't waste my time. Worse when I have children. Because 30 minutes with my kids is a lot. And it's valuable to me. So don't waste my time. So. It's important to put value around these things. Okay? I was checking out something the other day. Uh, oh yeah, I was listening to, to talk radio. And this guy talks about billionaires and how they think and he makes uh, an example about uh, uh, um, Argentina. Messi he says <laughs> Messi gets paid like, millions and millions and millions but in the game you won't see Messi he's all over the field running after the ball uh uh yeah, now it's about which strategic position. Let's go, Kijimisi Paula. It. Um, seven so as on your good Kijimisi Paula. My shop, my parcel, Messi. Yeah, now. We are if I got it. Okay? So you need to work towards spending less time and making more money. Because now time is money. Okay? How do I achieve the same thing but without putting in as much effort? I work extremely hard, but I tell my kids, my boy, I'm sorry, I can't spend. I'm just, I'm spending all this time at work so that one day I can spend more time with you. When my machine is just running. I know a lot of us think like, him fed marasoti, him fed whom sedes, you know? Referring to, to, to, to, to, referring to income as work, so there's never not earning without working. I believe we need to get out of that thinking. That's why we can never think of investment, because we always think like, Kumelu spanile. But when you build something that is valuable enough, it should just stand on its own and just make money on its own. But you need to spend the time on it in order to build that value. Okay? Ah, no tickets is expensive. Yeah, eh, maraniani turu, eh, ah, maratina, ah, I'm fed, if she has a lot for when, and then umunyo is like, nina niba chole nga malin, ah, kshukuti naat, mara is like, ah, mina, if I get tickets for my gig, I ne kshukuti ne, nge akhaf. That is credibility for you. You understand? But you know that you've built something strong enough and you need to believe in it before other people start believing in it. And there may be some sacrifice that you would not ordinarily do because of Tabaka and Yesisu. But sometimes you need to think, no, but I've spent enough time on it and I need to respect it. You know what I'm saying? Ah, okay. I missed some slides. I'm going to be a now, these are all nice things, no? Now, to have a nice voice and, and, and, and do what you do is all good, but the only thing that does matter at the end of the day is what's on paper. Okay? So, it starts off with this. All these nice things that I have in my head, very nice, very nice, very nice, very nice. Very nice. Can I write them down? In a way that's understandable. Like for instance, I want to get to a point of when people say, So why when Zani? Get to a point where I don't say, No, yes, 
I produce and a footy, I also do film scoring and I also do this and a footing at Tulana Lazy, but I also manage my business and it's like, that's too much. That's too much. I know some people think it's impressive for that, but you don't want that. I want to get to a point where people ask what you do and I say, I write. Okay? So, instead of wasting another person's time, Mchelwuti, yeah, man, sense and look, look, look, look, look. Can you write down what you do in one sentence? Okay? Simpiwe uh, Kumalo. A business that. Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah, for this and that and that. And that sums up what you do. Some companies, they call it uh, what? Vision statement. On a mission statement, how do you summarize what you do? But you need to see it on a piece of you need to write it down now. Maui Peck is like, but does this make sense? Actually, I've repeated the same thing, Lana. But until you see it on it from an aerial view, you need to look at things from aerial view because while he's still here, it's like problems. <laughs> it's like, oh, going to corner, no, mom. Oh, going to corner, no, you, you, why? It's just because it's all over the place. Take it out of there, put it on a piece of paper. And look at an aerial view. Uzai bona kai ingo be vange je anesasar like ah, but this is just a cute question. This, and then just cut it down. What I'm coming to is that you stop complaining as much because a lot of the times you're complaining about problems that you've created. You're gonna fear, ne? Nerves, fear. I was explaining this to my son driving from school yesterday talking about exams and all that stuff. And I'm like, you know, when I was at school, there used to be these cycle tests every Tuesday. And, uh, and I, wouldn't, I wouldn't study, like, on weekends, but I would be worried about the test. Instead, I spent my weekend worrying, <laughs> but I didn't study. <laughs> and worry and fear about anything, especially fear, fear doesn't actually exist. Fear doesn't exist. It's, it's all the stuff that you pull together, and then you start, you, you, you! Maraiko! You know? And then you find that when you actually go there, let the is and like it's not there. You know? So, and fear does not exist because it doesn't exist now. It's not in the present. It's either in the future. So, it's all the stuff that you... So, be very careful what your mind collects. And it's your mind sometimes that keeps you away from doing what you want to do naturally. Young John. And it's when you've experienced some... Yeah, man, this is me, man. But it's all the stuff that comes in from... So it's important to take stuff out of your mind, put it down. Now what I'm coming to is <clears throat> when you start thinking, like I mean, when I look at market theater and I think of and all these spaces here and baseline, I think of like, uh, you know, backing singers, for instance, sometimes. A lot of people, by the way, they don't even know how to charge. Even musicians don't even know how to charge. Like, so much, how much do you want? I, I was going to go to an hour and arrange it. It's like he in the yard. What is that? And then so this is Europa. You know? And what happens is that once it's like, okay, Yasin, we're doing a gig on the 2nd of May, which is three months away, Mara Sobes Reheza for three weeks or five weeks or whatever. Young John? So, um, I've got 80,000 rand for you. Two, eighty thousand. But once you start putting it down, start breaking it up. Remember what Vatiswandaka did with the whole thing? Okay, she started really breaking it down. It's in those sense that make a difference. When I went through my tax issue, I was hit with. 
Personally, I was hit with 2.7 million. Okay. Now, Sar said, they won 2.7 million. There was a civil case against me. There was a criminal case against me on the same tax issue. And I had just done, I think, Bravus, you might have been on that gig when I was doing the World Cup 90s, 2006 and I was putting music together. And I was using my personal account at the time. And I had just paid my suppliers, musicians and so on. I said, the day after SARS went into my account, Bona, if there was 2.7 million in that account, they were gonna take it. But whatever is there, they're gonna take. So they, everything was out of my account. And thank God I had just paid my suppliers. If I had not... <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying to you? If I had not, like... And I, couldn't, I can't say anything. But what I learned is that... Anyway, what I was told is that Isars went in there or they calculated that based on income that has come through my account. So, uh, uh, uh, uh, uh, royalties, shows, whatever, whatever, whatever, has gone into the account, but now they see it as income. Now, I had to get an accountant to prove, Uguti, not all the money that went through was income. Yes, it was income, but I need petrol <laughs> to get around to do what I do because I'm a person, I'm a personality, and even a haircut, it's so that I look a neat because I'm doing photo shoots, I'm doing young yeah, time, I need to look presentable. So I started learning, I started having to learn what expenses are about. And, and, and, and, and not every, yes, it might be stuff that's looking good, but that's keeping up your image and your brand. So, clothes, ah, uh -uh, chief, it's expensive. It's expensive, expensive. It's expenses. <laughs> Haircuts is expenses. Petrol is expenses. Phone bills is expenses. Uh, uh, uh, whatever you name it, it's expenses. Because it's what I need for my business. Now, that was just to prove a case. So, only so that they could lower what they were hitting me with. Going forward, how do I get away from that? Now the accountants tell you. But you need to have a business chief, like it needs to be the business, so that the business actually pays you a salary, and then you can take, then get, that's your income. But whatever you're saying are business expenses need to come out of the business account. I know you can't add, you are unregistered, now you're not your business. I look, you're one of the The excitement is all right. But actually, if you understand the real, uh, the real issue around having a business, and also it's not attached to your person. And, uh, so when you make a business decision, you're making a business decision, and you can account for it. Clan City Boy, did a nice voice, nice voice. That's oil. Your voice is not going to talk for you. Klaus Amutengi Moto, if you want to invest in a studio, your voice is not good enough. It's going to be the document that's going to talk for you. Okay? Now, on this tax issue, when I would try and say, yeah, but this and that, or they, I mean, for them to come to those figures, they went through all my transactions from 1998 to 2003 or something. Everything. Now I had to go and sit down, go through each and every single transaction and do the counting. Okay? Because they were hitting me on everything. There's bank charges, which is like 125. When you start counting that stuff in a month, that's a lot of money. And that going to like, 
mari mara kufunu you feel like i'm acting irresponsible i think ha 250 we atm ndihambe ni ophuza uphinde ubuye ah nje 200 you should have just might as well drawn 800 rand it would not have charged you as much that's a better business decision to make or a better saving decision to make okay eyinto yangicabisayo ukuba when i thought i was helping my mother and i'm helping this and that and i'm paying for this for my whatever in the family and i'm doing hours hit for being nice i paid a big price for paying a price know where everything resides where everything belongs and kanza kanza aya was a transactions did hey i did this and that payana i must still prove but he, okay can we have supporting documentation for that right now there is the state capture going on and abantu but he, but yeah but there was a, a transact there was an, a, a deposit that went into your account at muna ami nangazana na leyondo le you can't not your zana na anything otherwise then you don't have to get taxed for it because then it's income but if you can prove it you know I was invoiced for this here is the invoice or here is the email for the contract you know then it's like it's called supporting documentation okay very important as as people that have businesses of your own to to have a bookkeeper you know that thing at least these days there's technology you don't have to be you know we had to keep slips put them in a shoe box even though we never did that but like it was just so much harder to handle but these days there's apps that can take care of these things and then your your book your bookkeeper make sure that everything is together okay there's a minimal fee or whatever you pay you pay them just to keep your stuff together and even them they'll be able to say okay uh february 10 uh and february 25 these two transactions where the invoices for them that's when i started understanding how important it is to have an invoice and me now whenever i'm one of the i'm sure one of one of the top employers of musicians and singers in the city and they, i know a lot of them is like hey gonja mas spanel uzo ay uzo logo spuza na my invoice you know and i know but i had to nega ngara i think i mean sometimes i can check with ish i know as in okay no so kaya riding and maybe they have to ask someone else to do an invoice for them because they don't have a standard and you can check most by the invoice number we would know not a lot of invoices have been coming through from this particular business you know but whether i feel for them or not maroksala if i don't have it i mean cuz i have to prove good why that money left my account but besides just having to prove anything it's good for you to know how well you're doing or how not well you're doing and these days an app for instance which also shows you how well you how many invoices you've done say for this year or you're done and what's been paid what hasn't paid at least you can tell how well you've done in a particular year and maybe sometimes you can tell where a good amount of your business came from and over four years or so you can tell grand grand going back to the first slide this is my business man actually this is what i do this is where i actually make my money sometimes you don't know but you know what age that's what i do but it's like it will be the markets that tell you i know when we started off with bala brothers you know we're aiming for this but then we found ourselves in the africans market which we never expected and we're doing all these festivals vortel fiesta and kalahari fiesta and you know everywhere but when you start thinking about it it's it's sometimes you you don't know where it's going to catch but you need to be always prepared where the did the eh na ingayi ingayi be ready to take care of that okay 
when Vodacom first came, in fact, when the first, yeah, I there was the first cell phone company that came up. In that first year, they made 10 times more profit than they thought they were going to make. So it was like, ah, Africa, cell phones. <laughs> but there's no study that went into it that Africans actually like to speak. But it was like, ah, so far, they can't afford it. Ah, ah. But it ended up being like, I mean, we love phones, especially black people, airtime. And those days, it was just contract. They had to go to airtime because of the demand, because of what the market was telling them. Are they ready? How are we going to support this? Look at funeral policies now, because there's more of a demand. Actually, this is what these people need. This is the kind of demand. So let's be ready to give them a product that can suit that. Okay? Once in jail, your market says, Ish Allah, but Ish, yes, I wish me no go. Listen to that me no go. <laughs> and service that. In our, when we started off with Pala Brothers, there was uh, somewhere in the middle of the show we would do uh, Afrikaans hymns, just two of them. And it just, that idea just came up when we were on tour. I think we were driving through the winelands in Stellenbosch or something. And we started, you know, most we all went to the Dragon's Bank. So Saku, like, uh, and we started singing in harmony, like a transine, you know, like, to look, wow, that's really cool. So we decided to put that into our show. And it just, just became a, like a big hit to the audience. And then decided, okay, let's actually make an album of because there's a lot more hymns that <laughs> and we just put an album out just like that. In fact, your night Pala Brothers itself came out like that. Because we're on tour, we're actually rehearsing here at Baseline. Uh Upelo was on holiday and we're rehearsing the Pala family because we're doing a, a tour, you know, the Pala family with my mom and everyone. And it was break with Tundia Zalela Piano, and Upelo was on holiday from a Dragon's Bag, and, and he starts, uh, he was singing, You raise me up so I can stand on mountain. You raise me up. Uloi <laughs> sang and then, and then Loi sang and they harmonize, you know. I mean, I've never been, it's not like that song like used to be a harmony, it was just that melody that Josh Groban used to sing. But Loi actually sings the, the harmony, the, the alto, and then I harmonize it straight now, I'm getting And you're like, that's nice. <laughs> you know, Upelo is on holiday, he's just hanging with us in Jerusalem all And we happened to, to uh, be on tour. So we'd, he wasn't even singing with us. And he just came on for that just before uh, uh, interval and would sing just that one song. It was such a big hit called Keith Lister from BMG, I said, I've got something that we can do together. And put an orchestra together, put orchestrations together. I'm telling you, within a space of not more than seven days, we had recorded with the full Johannesburg Festival Orchestra. And you guys, you may not believe me, but in terms of given the time frame, okay, Bala Brothers brought in more for us income-wise than TKZ did given the frame team, the time frame that we did it in. Because of the positioning of it, we knew who we were targeting and we knew what kind of business we were. So we knew that we're not a radio act. So it's not like single. No, yeah, I think my is those guys. Uh-uh. We're a premium act and it's exclusive and we put it at a particular level without compromising it. So the more you know what it is that you're doing, you price it right, and you take care of the offering that you give. Minama Itali Pala Brothers was clear about, Chief, I'm going for the executive's wives. Oh, come on, I want to see them. Oh, they are just like, ah, okay. But it's really getting to the heart of the lady that just, you know, I always say I'm in the, I always say I'm in the business of tears. 
I know tears mean money. <laughs> Especially in television. Do you know that? Why there is tears? Ah, oh, that's cash. <laughs> that is cash. So, <laughs> I've spoken about if you don't know how to make a coach, if I think once you leave here, go and find out. Okay? And these days, there's templates online. There's, you know, you can check with it. This is how you code for some. Like, like there's codes for everything, man. Even if you play the code of Fiji, like I go, okay, if you want send the Uzo, I went to master class. Okay, we'll supply with coffee. Okay, okay, this is how much it's going to cost. And then you say whether you want that service or not. And after a while, you may have, it's important that you fail. You may have a few failures, but it's important that you just do it. And then you'll get to a point where you know what it is that you're doing. And then learn how to invoice and learn what the different contracts are. There's a contract almost for anything. Okay? Basic one pages that can give you an understanding and give you an understanding. And you're satisfied with your own decisions.